Hi guys, welcome back. This is part two in the series that where Jasper shows you how to paint a 250 slash nine half track. Uh, in last week's episode, he painted the body, the general body color and shaded it. And then he applied the uh, camouflage. And in this week's episode, he'll be doing uh, washing, um, sort of uh, weathering, distress work of that sort, and he'll be also finishing off the figure. If you missed out on last week's episode, I will link to it in the description box down below. So let's get right into it then. Uh, what he's doing here to start out with is applying a thin wash of Agrax Earthshade to the entire vehicle. It's important that it's thin because you don't want it pooling too much and you don't want it necessarily heavy all over the vehicle. Uh, he's also painted much of the really sort of large flat area of the model using gloss varnish before this step and the reason he does that is it is going to help prevent pooling where he doesn't want it it'll cause the wash to really only run down into the cracks which is really the only area that he really needs kind of shading on the entire model and again if you get too much on like you can see here he's using a q-tip to kind of clean up those areas Now, while the entire model should get a light wash of Agrax Earthshade with a sort of watered down wash, uh, it's good to put a sort of heavier wash around the wheels and tracks because that area is going to be grimier and it looks just better when it's darker. So this is just undiluted Agrax Earthshade and it's being really, you know, put on very generously. Um, so you can see, so you get some really, really dark shading in between those uh, wheel segments. Um, you're going to probably need to let this dry quite a bit when you're done just because of the amount of wash that's being applied here. So the next real thing to do here once the wash is dry is to start base coating all the areas of the model that need to be black. Uh, that of course includes the figure here which is going to eventually be painted other colors but black makes a good undercoat so you know while Jasper's at it he's going to paint it bl him black too. Now as for the vehicle it itself areas that are going to need a black blaze coat are going to include all the sort of mesh grading there on the turret, the barrels of the gun you're going to want to do in black, uh, on, the mo on the sort of superstructure you're going to want to do the front tires in black, and of course the tracks that should be obvious. You're going to want to have a good black base coat. Uh, I'd also recommend you go ahead and do down in any sort of window slits or sort of places like that just because you can't really see into them and black is just a good way uh, to kind of cover those areas. Uh, there's nothing really tricky here. The only thing is that you just need to be really careful, particularly on the tracks and some areas like that, that you get good coverage and that you don't, you know, get black onto areas where you don't want it. And because of that, all of this takes Jasper a bit of time. Now while that black is drying a little bit, Jasper's going to go in and really quickly base coat the flesh areas on the figure, so his face and hands in this case, and for that he's going to be using Vallejo Saddle Brown. Next, uh, Jasper's going to work on pin washing the model, and for this he's just going to use pure undiluted Agrax Earthshade, and the idea here is really just to use a fine brush to run sort of extra lines of wash sort of around areas where you want there to be sort of an extra shadow or you just want to emphasize the division between parts. So you can see how he's running it around all those little um, sort of compartments in the side and just anywhere there's a seam or a line. And depending on where it is, you may wish to go back and add a couple layers of this once the first one dries, especially if it's an area where you really want to emphasize that shadow and really put sort of this really you know, dark division line in there. Uh, but then of course, things like around these, these bolts and little seams and stuff like on the side there, you may not feel like you need as much. And if you're going down in really deep creases, the wash is also just gonna sit in those areas better, which it will mean that you don't probably need to apply so many layers. Uh, now Jasper is going to be dry brushing the wheels once uh, the, all the washes and pin washes and everything are completely dry. He's using uh, Vallejo Middlestone for this and you can see he's really focusing on the wheels. You don't really want to get that yellow onto the gray kind of um, tires and tracks because it's just not the right shade. 
but it, if you're light at this step, if that happens, you can go back and correct it pretty easily in the next step here. Uh, and he's also going to be applying a sort of a similar light dry brush to all the sort of mesh screen on the turret. Now Jasper is going to be highlighting the uh, tires here and the wheels. Uh, first he's going to go in with just German gray and sort of lightly uh, brush over those areas just to sort of get a sort of a base highlight. And then once he's gotten that he's going to go back in with a slightly lighter color. You can lighten the German gray with whatever you like. I think he used uh, blue gray for that. You don't want it to be too too subtle and he's going to use that to sort of line on a lighter highlight color. You can also go ahead at this point and give a light German gray dry brush to the gun barrels if you want. Um, those will look good that way. Jasper's going to paint this crewman using this sort of reed green uh, panzer uniform, which would be appropriate for a guy either crewing or driving this type of vehicle. So he is going to base coat the hat and his jacket, and, you know, all those parts of his clothing are showing using uh, German camouflage dark green here. Now he also is going to apply a really light overbrush of German camouflage black brown to the tracks just to get a little bit of extra kind of color going on there. Then in order to uh, sort of give the tracks and those edges of those wheels a little bit more of a metallic cast, he's going to be applying sort of a real subtle dry brush of Vallejo Air gun metal here. You don't want this to be too strong. You just want to get just a little bit of a metal look to those, but you want them to still be really dark and mostly sort of this gray shade. So th this is just really kind of a subtle kind of effect that you're getting by doing this. Then in order to further define the metal, he's going to take some Vallejo Air Steel and he's going to more precisely brush that, as you can see, kind of onto the treads, you know, where they are, would be making contact and, the, you know, they would be just shinier because they're getting worn there. And you can do that also a little bit on the spokes uh, in the, kind of those sprockets and any area where there's going to be, you know, real wear between the different metal pieces. Now Jasper's going to really start weathering and kind of mucking things up here. So he has taken Vallejo uh, Sandy Paste, which is sort of this, yeah, Sandy Paste is exactly as it's described. It's just a neutral gray color and you can then sort of mix in paint to get it to look how you want. He used German camouflage black brown and just some other random kind of medium brown shades. You could use flat brown, chocolate brown, you know, just some nice dark mud shades to get a nice color that's going to look mucky. And then he's going to start really applying that to the undercarriage of the vehicle so you can see really sort of between the tracks and the chassis and then just underneath the base anywhere where you would expect mud to be kind of would splash up and then to cake on and dry and this is you know this is also looks really good because you know it helps also hide some you know areas of the vehicle that you know didn't get as much attention earlier and it's going to give it just a more sort of realistic, uh, you know, finished looking effect. At this point, Osper is going to go back in and work on our crewman's uniform here. His first layer is a mixture of German camouflage dark green with a bit of olive green in it. And you can see his style is not really blended like mine is. He just goes back in and sort of just uses line work to define the wrinkles and creases in the uniform. And you can see his first layer is going to be very, you know, liberal. He's going to be applying it to most areas and really only leaving really dark creases in that sort of base color. Once he's done his first highlight, he's then going to go in and mix a bit more olive green into his base to get sort of a medium shade. And he's going to go back over applying sort of just more wrinkles and creases to areas where there would be more sort of light hitting the uniform, but it, just kind of applying a few less, I guess, than he did with this sort of first base shade. And then he's just going to finish off the uniform by taking almost pure olive green and applying it very kind of sparingly just to the really high creases sort of thin lines of it because again since he doesn't blend he just will kind of apply smaller and sort of smaller and smaller kind of jaggy lines to indicate highlights and creases on the uniform 
The hat is going to be a slightly different color. Jasper is going to apply first highlight of German Field Grey World War II, and then he's going to go back in and lighten it up in shades by adding a sky gray into that and you can put in on two or three layers depending what you want it's a real small area though so you shouldn't have to spend too much time on this to sort of finish up some of the detailing on the uniform Jasper is going to take some silver gray here and he's going to apply piping to the epaulets the collar and the details on the hat and that's going to make this guy into a sergeant Now that the mud on the sort of the under chassis has had a really good long time to dry, you can kind of go back in and dry brush it. Jasper here has taken some Vallejo cork brown. You can see he's sort of lightly going over it and just applying a, kind of a highlight to accentuate those areas. Obviously, back down under the, you know, tracks and stuff where it's in a deep shadow. You don't have to bother trying to dry brush this. Now, because applying that sort of dry brush to the mud, got a little bit of brown and kind of dustiness onto the tracks. Jasper's going back in with the Vallejo Air Steel and he's going to use that to touch up all of the kind of areas where there was wear and where he really wanted that shiny metal to show through so that, you know, it, they haven't been too kind of dingied up by the application of the, you know, mud colors. Here Jasper is highlighting the hands and the face of the figure. He is using the foundry flesh tried for this. I, I obviously don't work very much with foundry anymore, but he still does like to use a couple of the triads that he you know, really likes, and the skin one is, real, is really handy. So here to start out with, he's taking the flesh shade color and he's applying that sort of over the base you know picking out his fingers and just all of the sort of definite really defining areas on the face with you know kind of small lines since this is the first layer you can be pretty generous you just want to make sure you leave that really dark color to help define you know under the nose and in the mouth and the eye sockets and all of those kinds of areas He's then going to apply the flesh medium tone here, and you can see he's really emphasizing areas now like the fingers and the nose and the lips, the ears, all those, just starting to basically pick out areas that stand out more. And finally, he's going to finish off using the flesh light. Um, like me, he uses, he kind of really just dots this on. Like you can see, it's going on the knuckles and sort of the really lightly along the fingers. And then you're going to want to hit areas like the tops of his sort of brow ridge, the nose, the ears, sort of the tops of the cheekbones, the you know the tip of the chin and the sort of upper lip and you can see he just makes it even more just dotted than me and doesn't even try to really blend these areas together. Now he's just going to darken the eye sockets a bit with some Agrax earth shape. Next, Jasper is going to really quickly base coat the hair here with some flat brown. Now he's just going to apply some highlights. First, he's going to use a bit of English uniform to just get some you know, some sort of larger highlight areas on there. And then he's going to finish up with some just some tan yellow here and there, just getting some kind of lighter streaks mixed in. Next, Jasper really quickly painted the strap on the binocular. He's base coating that here with German camouflage black brown. And then once that's in there, he's going to just take leather brown and make just a real simple sort of lighter highlight on top of it. Now Jasper's going to uh, paint the binoculars themselves. He's going back over them in black just because they got paint on them from the other steps, so they need to be kind of redone. So he's base coating them first, and then he's going to go back in first with German and gray and kind of apply a very overall highlight to most of the binocular area. And then he's going to finish off with just some neutral gray to sort of apply indications of like rims around the eye sockets and uh, things like that. The figure's now basically done, so Jasper's going to go back to weathering the vehicle. He's now going to start applying chipping and sort of dings to it. Uh, generally, 
Jasper and I both have subscribed to the philosophy, as you've probably heard, of less is more with the sort of chipping and dinging, but he's decided to do a little bit more on this uh, half track just because, you know, he just wants to show you how to do more of it, and also because he feels like maybe this would get a little bit more weathered and dinged up and kind of run into more things, or it's just had a harder life. So he's taking some German camouflage black brown here, and he's taking a very small brush, just probably like a number zero, and he's just going to apply very fine dots and sort of combinations of dots to get little chips around areas where he thinks you know it would suffer some wear so along sort of any sort of sharp edges and sort of around any holes or just corners or places where you know things would run into the vehicle or the vehicle would run into things uh, in general, just remember not to do this too, too much because it's it just going to look strange and pretty much any weathering you do on a vehicle of this scale is going to look a little off, especially if you do too much of it just because it, the chips you paint are always going to be proportionally a little bit too big for, you know, what you're, you know, you're working with here. Since he still had a little bit of wet leather brown, he's also going to use that to really quickly apply some rust to the exhaust. Now he's going to finish off the chipping here with Vallejo Air Steel, and he's going to sort of go back to all the areas where he applied the German Camouflage Black Brown, and he's going to apply then some small areas on top of that, or sort of next to it, I guess, of the steel. You don't want to apply as much steel as you do the brown. The brown kind of sort of represents where the the uh, vehicle's been chipped down to sort of its base coat, uh, sort of primer coat layer, and then the steel represents where it's been knocked all the way down to the metal of the actual hull, and obviously that is going to happen a little bit less, so you want to not apply nearly as much metal. You want to make that even more subtle than you did the German camouflage black-brown chipping. Now, kind of because we said we would in the beginning, Jasper's experimenting here a little bit with some pigments on the vehicle. If, is, as you may or may not know, pigments are sort of like a powdered substance that you can use to weather uh, vehicles like this a little bit further. They're basically ground up pastels, and they work mostly best on sort of larger scale models, but you can try and do a little bit here with these as well. What he's using here is Vallejo pigments. He's using uh, natural sienna, and he's also using MIG pigments, uh, dry mud. The dry mud is a lighter, sort of dustier color. And he's just going to take a big brush, and you can see he's applying it mostly to the undercarriage because that's where it's going to be most effective. That's the area where you're going to get the sort of the most dust and caked on kind of dirt happening. So you want to apply it there. You don't really want to put very much up above. I mean, you can, but if you, you can then just end up with the whole vehicle looking kind of over dusty and there's just no contrast and that's not very good it's also nice you can go in with a small brush and apply some sort of mud kind of streaks with this which kind of can look good if you want to apply those up above but it really you really should kind of stick down below and even after we were finished the Osprey wasn't totally sure like if it really added a whole lot extra at this scale you really almost need more detail and just a bigger size to really make the pigments kind of operate at maximum efficiency. So you could totally leave this step out and it probably wouldn't make a big difference to the appearance of the model. So here is our uh, finished 250-9 half track. You may have noticed earlier that there were shiny areas left over from where the decals were applied and where it was sort of coated to help with the wash application. Jasper's now sprayed the whole thing with some Windsor & Newton uh, matte artist's uh, varnish, which is really, really effective for getting rid of that shine. And so you can really, again, see the nice sort of gradation in the painting on the hall and in the camouflage, which was lost a little bit earlier. Uh, I think we were both really happy with how this vehicle worked out, Jasper too, and I think we were especially surprised, as I said in the last video, how well that sort of painted gradation in the tone really worked. And now that all the mud and weathering and sort of detail washing has been applied, it really now shows, you know, just what a nice effect you can get. And, and the sort of the real, the sort of bands that were very apparent earlier are much less noticeable, and you just have sort of a nice, subtle, shaded effect. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, uh, share it, do leave comments for me and Jasper about what you thought of this video, you know, so we can know, so we can kind of know how we need to improve next time. And of course, do subscribe as well if you have not done so already to this channel. So that is all for now, and I will see you next time.